So how I discovered the rope, I, before I discovered the rope, I was training with the staff and I was, I was sort of, you know, manipulating the staff with the figure eights of the hands. And it's a very, you know, it, the feedback is very, you know, immediate. It will punish you if you try to go fast and you mess up, or it'll punish the TV across the room hmm. if you if you can't manipulate it, you know, well enough to go fast and you try to go fast, uh, or if you're pushing the envelope. Um, and I also created a product called the Bola Trainer, the Quick Hands Bola Trainer, which was an elastic cord with two balls in the I've end. Got one. I love it. And so yeah. I spent a lot of time manipulating that and turning it where the balls are flying around. And so I was manipulating the string from the center which is extremely challenging to do. It takes hours and hours and hours of practice. And then in 2004, I was teaching at a fitness conference and I was actually teaching with a ballast ball, the stability ball that I put weight inside. And that's what I was teaching at that conference. But I met Buddy Lee, who's one of the world's best jump ropers. And I watched him perform and I was just dazzled by his capacity to like just move that rope so amazing. And it was very, you know, magnetic for me. I was like, wow, I want that movement quality. And with one of his ropes that he gave me, I came back, landed in San Diego from New York City. And, you know, 10, 30, 11 at night, I went out in the backyard and I'm like, okay, I want to do it just as good as Buddy Lee. And I started the journey i i you know jumped through the rope and you know tried to go to the side and then i came to the realization i'm like wait a minute why am i jumping through the rope i want to learn all the stuff that is the fancy stuff like i can jump the rope i can do it running i can double under like okay I, i've got that skill good enough that i can jump a rope and i don't have any of the fancy skills yet I mean, I could do like a crossover or something like that, but by making the decision to say, okay, 30 days and I'm very intense. So when I make one of those like goals, it, you know, it, I, I follow through. So 30 days, every day I train, I don't jump through the rope, not even once, no matter how tempting it may be, you don't jump through the rope. And so that led to the practice of figuring out, oh, I've got to turn right. I've got to turn left. And if I start to change me, oh, well, then the rope pattern must change. And there's four fundamental patterns that emerge. And that's just the structure, functional reality of a human being with a rope. And in that process, I started to recognize like, oh my gosh, this is the path to martial skill. Like I had studied some martial arts with no progress, essentially, because I you know, I didn't have good instruction. I didn't know where to be and how to be there. And the rope teaches you how to spiral and rotate and move with total coordination. So you know where you are in space. So suddenly the martial arts moves. Of, oh, I, I've got that in my body already. <laughs> right? Because it's you're working cool. at a foundational level before. Yeah, it's the supination and the pronation and the extension, the flexion and like the whole thing. And it's always integrated. So the rhythm and timing that, and sequencing of everything. Yes. And, and the fluid continuity of your hand down to your feet. So if you're manipulating the rope and the rope is true, you're never disconnected from your hand to your feet, which means that you can punch somebody and it will count <laughs> if you're connected down to your feet. If you're not connected to your feet, you're slapping somebody and it's hard to knock them out. But if it's, if you got everything and all your body weight, and it's always integrated, well, now you suddenly got, oh, wow, genuine capacity that now when you start to learn the particulars and the specifics of the different, you know, martial modalities or martial styles, you can actually fill it in. And you can fill it in much more rapidly than if you don't have that simple skill set of the manipulation of the rope. And I recognized that. And then it was couple weeks in i was i was doing it like and moving around like running around the backyard with the rope and moving it changing directions and then I, I thought of like david and goliath i was like this is how it must have happened you've got this guy you know he's a teenager he's, he's out there you know defending the sheep as a shepherd and you got to protect the sheep when a lion or a bear comes well what are you going to do because if they get one they're going to get them all so I went inside, I, I opened up the Bible and it, it was like one of those like oh, moments because my birthday is one seventeen. in the Bible. It's one Samuel 17. 
is where that story is found. San Diego longitude happens to be 117. So this sort of this like, uh, I don't know, this is this weird little coincidental like identification of these yeah. 117s. It, 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 it fueled me even more as if God has a purpose for me type of, mm-hmm. you know, feeling. <laughs> one, one, seven. And so you know, one, one, seven. And, and I, it's one, one's heaven. Oh yes. Yeah. You know? And then and I say heave on as opposed to heaven. It's heave on, right? You, you got the burden of being a human and you, you got to keep on marching no matter how bad it gets. Take another step, right? If mm-hmm. I don't take another step, well, I can't get out of the problem. I can't get to the solution. <laughs> so, so that that fueled my effort even more with the rope. And I just went, I went crazy with the rope. And in 30 days, I had literally transformed my body and I had literally programmed in that figure eight continuity of dominant, non-dominant. I was suddenly better at every single thing that I did. Literally, there wasn't a thing, including reading, because this 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 idea that I can take the motor sensory cortices and I can run them in a pattern that gives me this equal and opposite sort of neural engagement. It harmonizes the brain and then suddenly the frontal cortex and, and the temporal cortex and all these other aspects of the brain starts to harmonize, organized about this sort of engine that if I'm moving my hands in this pattern, there is a neural a neural connection that corresponds to that pattern. And so with the rope, it guides you and it, it, it makes you true so that eventually you go wireless. You don't need the rope and you have the same connection yep. because you've done yep. so many reps. And in terms of number of reps per unit of time, you can aggregate 100,000 reps in practically no time with a rope. Whereas if you were to do biceps curls, 100,000 reps, I mean, it, that's going to take you a long time to complete that whereas a rope you're just i mean you're getting so many reps per minute that it's it's a very fast process relative to anything else and the other thing that the rope does is you can watch a juggler do the most amazing tricks but if you remove the balls and just watch their body it's doing very simple alternating bilateral patterns that's it and with a rope you can dial in the same exact level of precision that you could not do with the balls because there's no bridge to it. And it takes such an organized concentration of coordination. But with the rope, it would take years and years and same, years. You, yeah. you, with the rope, you will get, you get on board day one, just race and chase and make it fluid and then do it with the other side. So you are getting the truest form of coordination attenuated about four fundamental patterns that gives you the ability to map the space around you while mapping the space within you to become an excellent mover, even if you're not that athletic. So, because it's gross motor movement down to the hands and the feet. So it's, 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 it's core movement, but it's con- it, but there's continuity with the hands and the feet. And we believe in proximal core out, but we also believe in distal to proximal in. And it's sort of like training balance. If I can control the chaos and then I can organize and program in the fluidity, continuity and balance and timing. Well, now I have the whole puzzle solved. Hmm. Hmm. And now I'm not in pain. 